we started going to the Catholic Church in Serbian, where Mum was making new friends, family friends. And one guy there, which used to help out with the priest and all the altar servers and general games on behind the scenes. He wasn't really a gentleman. He was a paedophile, unbeknown to me mum and dad. Um, so, yeah, it's quite hard. I've mentioned it in the previous interview. But yeah, I was sexually assaulted by this guy. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. You need the Television app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo. Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be, can afford to be. Um, <laughs> it's getting pricey out here. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight to all the originals, nolanpolandrecords.com. No, polandrecords.com, let me get that right. Um, strangestation.co.uk, all the affiliates and fans of the show. Big shout out to yourself, sharing is caring. You know what we do? We don't do this for our hells. We do it for the spread of information and the culture. So, uh, yeah, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, uh, and anyone has got the Television app, hold tight. You know what it is. Free download, Android, iPhone, free street culture, sports, weekly mixes, episodes and podcasts, live shows and more. Hey, good morning to you. Afternoon, whatever time you're checking this out. Uh, it's good feety time. And uh, I have a friend of mine that's here, uh, a, a local to the area, mostly through affiliation of the crew that he represents and has been representing it well for a long time. This guy goes back decades or more. We definitely have a deep conversation and one that not to be missed. We have equal CBM inside the place. Sweet, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm all right, man. Good to see you here. Yeah. Bouncing bank after last year. Yeah. It was crazy year. It was a crazy year after lockdown and mm. stuff like that. And mm. lost three very close people. Three very close. Fucking hell, wow. Yeah, I had my uncle go. Your uncle? I had my dad go. Whoa. And then obviously Jano passed. Jano as well. And I had that in a seven week period. Seven week. Seven week period. Rest in peace to all. Rest in peace to all. Yeah. Was, um, was, your, was that your dad's brother? Yeah, it was my dad's brother. Oh, my Younger goodness. brother. Wow. Only by about four years. But and that, what was it? What was it? Dementia. Uh, Dementia and cancers and oh, stuff like that. So, I'm so yeah. sorry. But he went peacefully. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Fez had been heart, ill. Man. Dad had been ill for a while. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so. It gets you, doesn't it? it? You don't expect three to go. Not once. I was expecting him to go. Yeah. I knew it was due. Yeah. But when the others passed as well, yeah. it, it hurt. Yeah. I would say break me a little bit. Yeah, of course it would but, do. But, you know, that was last year. Mm-hmm. Went to the, obviously, my dad's funeral, I went to the wake for Jano. Mm-hmm. Um, Rest in peace, Jano. Like, um, so, yeah. not, not discounting any uh, aforementioned, mention, but, um, yeah, Jano, uh, for those outside of the UK, uh, very established and uh, f- uh, worldly renowned character within a graffiti uh, scene over here. Yes, so, yeah. But obviously blind things happen when obviously after the funeral I hit rock one. I was intaking alcohol quite heavily, which obviously back then I was going home after work and drowning my sorrows. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I went and got help. Nobody else said, Joe, you're drinking too much. Mm. And I had bereavement counselling. Until February this year. So, yeah. February this year? Yeah. So, June to February, I was having bereavement counselling. Wow. Yeah. 
That's a long stretch, isn't it? Yeah. Surprising. Yeah, yeah well, obviously, free bereavements. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, I always put my hands up and say, yeah, I enjoy the beer. I always do. Mm. But obviously, I've got to knock it on the head now mm. and calm it down and look forward to the future. So. Yeah, the beer thing. The beer thing. I mean, we, we spoke about this a little bit before coming in. It, especially in graffiti, it's... Uh, it's a social thing. It's a social thing, isn't it? You know, you, you meet up with writers, you have a cut of beers, you have a paint, and mm. it's like your old man and your mates, they used to go down the pub and have a couple of beers mm. and play cards for snooker, pool, whatever. Mm. But we now go to a wall and have a paint and a pint. Mm. It's a social thing. Mm. Do you think well, Do you think that those circles, um, they, they nurture people that drink and they probably didn't see I've, you drinking so, so much? I didn't see myself drinking that much when I opened the first one. Really? It weren't till probably two, three weeks later I'm going, oh, shit, I've just done an 18 box in two days. 18 you know, box in two days? And I'm doing an 18 box the next two days. And then it was like that for a month or more. So I, before I realised, I was thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, because it creeps, it comes around really Yeah, quick. you don't realise you've done nine cans at the end of the night. It's not until you wake up or you get home from work the next day. You think, I only thought of them yesterday. Mm. Half of them were gone. Mm. But you don't realise it. Mm. And obviously, you're not buying pint size cans. You're buying these 440s. Mm. With me, when they were doing the 500 mils, you go, oh, right, two of those is a litre. And I'm thinking, well, my maths is terrible. Mm. Always has been, mm. you know. So I can't work out how much I was actually intaking. Apart from, oh, that's nine cans. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, There's some of I've just bought and it's now gone in two yeah, days. That's yeah. mad. Yeah. And then back to Tesco's, another box, bang. Another box, two days later, bang. But somebody didn't come up to me and say, Jay, you're drinking too much. I went to the GP on my own. you done I, well there. I, I opened up to myself and said, Jay, I need to sort this. Yeah. All right, I can have a couple of pints now. I'm fine. And then I enjoy them. Yeah. Where before it was like a self-abuse. Yeah. So yeah. the mind is a the mind is a cunning little fucker, isn't it? Yeah, it it, it tricks you into this, these levels of dependency, and and it preys on your vulnerability. Yeah, it, it was blocking things out, but looking back on it, it wasn't because it was still there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I've blocked many things out over the years. Obviously, probably how I got in the graph, really. Mm. Um, Obviously, you know about how I got into graph because mm. I sent you a link the other day. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll definitely get into that anyway. We'll and and by the way, while we're on the subject of the the linking and the graphing, if if you're not uh, watching and you're listening, uh, big up to the audio crew. Uh, but I I am currently uh, showing presenting this wicked wicked canvas that uh, equals just sent through. Um, beautiful beautiful stencil of love with all the uh, uh, tag and regalia. Ala equals CBM. So thank you so much for that, man. It looks no problem. so unique. It's definitely... It's That's definitely my little unique. token to say thanks for putting up with me this afternoon. Oh, my it's brother. even it's tagged on the back as well for you. Yo. Oh, yeah, that looks sick. Look, I'll just flip it over. This equal tag, man, like, it's just got so much flavour. Thank you so much for that, man. That's all right. That's over 30-odd years of practising that one word. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know, you, you, there's got to be something wrong if it ain't right, right? Yeah, obviously... <laughs> I can't peace. I'm going to put my hands up. There's many guys out there saying, you can't peace. No, I can't. And I'll put my hands up and I'll tell you I can't peace. You know what? I did. But respect that to my guy. But like he does. I'm a writer. Yeah, he's a writer. I'm, I'm not a peace. I don't do pieces. Yeah. And I had an argument with Perth out in Oz, a uh, mate of Fuzz One's book. We won't go into the Fuzz One bit because people will hate me for mentioning that name. But Perth said, practice, practice, practice. Mm. And I was practising, 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 and all these bits of paper were ended up in the bin. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. In the end, I just kept practising my name, practising my tag, practising my tag, practising my tag, practising my, my style with a pen. Mm -hmm. And I was practising it with paint. I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I will always be a writer. Give me a blockbuster. Yeah, I'll do a blockbuster, no problem. Mm -hmm. For that be it. Mm -hmm. Single, bang. But PC, no. But if I keep practising, maybe one day. It's all about. It is all about um, owning the lane that you yeah. you're in. Yeah. That's why. Uh, just going back to idea. That's why I got so much respect for him because he he's, he he doesn't profess to be anything more than what he is. But what he does do, yeah, he maximizes. Yeah. 
I love that. And you're very much the same, brother. Like, yeah. Well, obviously, nice. you know, where I was from, I was from Kingston in Surrey. Mm. You know, we didn't have the underground. Mm. We had trains. We had buses. Mm. We had two bus carriages. Mm -hmm. So I was taking buses. Mm. Talk to me the bus here, because let's, let's, let's take it right back. We're getting right back. How far back? Right, let's go back. <laughs> let's go so far, because a little bird tells me, and I know this straight from the horse's mouth as well, that you originally frequented in West London. You were Acton, uh, early doors Acton, right? I grew up in Kingston. My nan and granddad lived in White City. Right. So my first job in 87, I used to work alongside my late dad at uh, a place called Wilkinson Sods. As a swordsman. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to make swords. Stop it. So back in 87, like the old man would wake me up. So I was terrible for getting up. Literally mm -hmm. terrible. What? we told flannels and shit. There was 8J up in the morning. Fucking hell. And we'd have tea at home. Then he'd drive to White City and we'd pull up at John, Sn John Snow's. Mm -hmm. News agents on the outside yeah. road. Dad would send me in the paper shop, get me Nan's paper, my Dad's paper. And I used to get a paper. And I used to lean over this little ginger paper boy to get these papers. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Because of social media, I later found out that little ginger-headed paper boy is a guy who's in CVM. Matt. Mr. Matt was a paper boy. Fuck Straight oh. up, yeah. He was the paper boy. Right. I used to lean over in John Snow's news agents, get me that old man, I mean, and paper. That is mad, coinky dinky. Yeah, yeah, that's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, if it weren't for social media, oh no, you would never known. No, I didn't know Met before social media. That's crazy. I heard of him, obviously, mm. seen his. Bits and pieces around and CBM. So he was a paper boy as well, was he? Uh, yeah, he was a paper boy. Big up Met, by the way, of yeah, course. CBM set. crew, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so obviously worked there till just after my first daughter was born. That was 91. Mm. So, yeah, I remember that day very well because she was eight weeks early, my daughter. Really? She went 2.13. Really? Jesus. Yeah, eight weeks early, 2.13 she weighed. And that evening... I don't remember this, but I was with Perth from Australia. Mm. And we met up with Fame, the original Fame. Original Fame, yeah. I don't remember it. Do you? No. Wow. I was, I was absolutely intoxicated. Obviously, Mrs. has just gone in. Fame to you, hold tight. Oh, day. The original Fame. The original Fame, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Perth told me afterwards, because we got a bus back to Kingston that night, he said, you actually came this bus. He was absolutely wankered. Really? And were you just blasted? Well, were see, you celebrating the fact? I was celebrating, obviously, the birth of my daughter. Yeah. Obviously, the missus at the time, she nearly died because of the high blood yeah, pressure. Yeah, of course, and, yeah. Uh, you know, what was it they called it? Some mad thing for high blood pressure and toxemia or something. Right. And he said, I remember you do getting on the bus first, and by the time I got to the top of the staircase, Perth said, he said, uh, you've done the two back panels. Then you was doing all the panels in between the lights. Then you done the two at the front. Then you done the other side. Then you started doing the windows. <laughs> and he said, the all-time classic was, excuse me, love, can you move your tits out of the way? I want to tag this window. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so big up her for reminding me of that, that, that evening. Oh, but, my God. Yeah, so, yeah, daughter's 31 now. Yeah, so that was 91. <laughs> so that was, but that wasn't the earliest stages of graph for no, you. you were, no, Because you were, like you were saying, yeah. you were bus bombing. Yeah, I was bus bombing well before that. I yeah. was obviously 84, I reckon I started. Who were you rolling with? Who were, I was rolling with Century. Me, me and Century went to the yeah, same school. Yeah. Century was in a proper murals and artwork. Yeah. And he actually was my best man, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, Century was my best man at the wedding. That was 92. But Century was more afraid of the illegal side and the bus bombing and stuff like yeah. that. And we did a few bits and pieces around toll of ways and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then, obviously, 87, I started college. And a mate of mine used to work in, like, Wimpy in Kingston. Mm -hmm. 
So on Saturday afternoon, he'd be working, mm. eat wood, walk in. I'll have a quarter cheese meal, mate, chocolate shake. And I'd get a bag as big as this. Really? And it'd be like... Totally hooked up, see? Yeah. So my Saturday afternoon, apart from munching loads of wimping chocolate shake, I'd give him me tenner and I'd get a fiver and five ones back in me change. Beautiful. So, and I'd what you know, is he? Then it'd be bus bombing most Saturday afternoons, or I'd go down Hampton Kill, meet up with the RFK lots, mm. uh, this mess map down at Hampton Court. There was tunnels underneath the platform yeah, at Hampton yeah. Court Station, so we did a bit of work down there and we'll ride around on buses and a few tubes yeah. or whatever, just track, looking at track sides. You know, everyday thing back in the mid to late 80s. Uh -huh. And then, obviously, I uh, met up with Fed, rest in peace. Rest in peace, yes, indeed. Um, we did Norbert and Garage. So, yeah, insides and outsides, half they all parked up at the night. What was, it, what was the fascination of... Because I get it, because they just travel. Yeah. They get around. And not only that, believe it or not, buses don't just stay... Well, weren't back then. They didn't just stay at one garage. They no. were transferred because it wasn't TfL then, it was London Transport. So one bus could be, say, at Kingston Garage tonight, yeah. tomorrow night, could be... Top yeah. garage. That's who you feel. We'll kind of all see you when you think about it because trains are, you know, the regiment within their lines. Yeah. yeah. But there's more buses than yeah. trains. I guess that was the theory, so, right? Yeah. It's basically, I was doing the buses at Norberton and Kingston, say the open forecourt at Kingston, which is now the Thunder. Mm -hmm. So we know it was a hungry horse not too long ago. Mm -hmm. I've seen you know, in a fight and thinking, I used to take buses here. But this yeah. this table is the bus used to be fast. I used to take that. <laughs> but yeah, but I used to go into Northern Garage like 86, right? And there was like three floors. On the first floor, I think, if I remember right, is where the drivers used to get their duties and their paperwork for their jobs for the day and where they cashed in because mm -hmm. obviously they took fares back then. The next floor, I think, was the canteen. I used to go in the canteen and have dinner. Stop yeah. it. And I, Liberties. Absolutely. Right? Liberties. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm waiting for my old man. He's on the 71s today. My old man wasn't even a bus driver. He was a silk screen printer for Wilkinson Sods. So what was the theory on this for a second? Hold on. So what, to, to be in the matrix of it, you yeah. were able to obtain... And not only that, they were allowed public into this garage because you used to be able to buy your travel cars and your bus passes in the, in the building. But if you went wow. up to the top floor, they had a games room for the drivers and the conductors. They had the RMs as well back. So you just played it like... I, I was going in there, I was playing snooker, you know, a few games of snooker, go down a bit of nosh saying I'm waiting for my old man, he's on the 71s or whatever route he was on, even though he wasn't a bus driver, and I have a bit of nosh as well. I love that. And he then, said nosh as well. Like, right, this is fucking London right, right here, right. mate. Then I would go down and start getting onto the buses. I was taking up on the insides, taking drivers' doors mm. and... Downstairs, obviously, then downstairs on a double deck of yeah, bus in, yeah. in service yeah. is quite up. But when they're parked up, they're not. Yeah. When there's no drivers in there, yeah. they're not. And no public, no passengers. Yeah. And I was in outside, not many, but. That it's fascinating that back but, then you could do that. Yeah. But it's crazy things, and I was doing that daily. Really? And I was How old had you been? What, by TV? 86, I was 16, 16 yeah. 17, 87, yeah. Yeah, a long time ago, man, but like, it feels like... Well, 87 was the year I met Don, if you work out 87 from now, that's 35 years ago. Big up, Don. Yeah. Um. Whenever I hear these stories, I, I do go, my, my recesses go back to a more um, nostalgic, warm, sepia time of, uh, of, of, of London and 80s as a whole. Um... But then, then there is this other argument that, that you know, there's only minor adjustments yeah. in this day and age compared to there, and it's offset with other things. So where you didn't have technology and you could get away with stuff, a lot more people were getting away with murder. Yeah. But then if you've got technology now, okay, people aren't going to get away with it, but then the government's getting away with murder. Yeah. You know, it's so. But, okay, let's CCTV now. Yeah. But how long did it take before they pull that tape, check it out, and go, oh, somebody's just take that bus. Is that today? Is that tomorrow? Is it next week? Next month? No, it's just it. It. Oh. Is it ever? Is it ever checked? Is there actually a tape in Do I know? Do mm -hmm. I care? Mm -hmm. No. At this point, my uh, don't try this at home. Everything we talk about is a nice little story. A story. Uh, yeah. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Yeah. Nice little story. 
the end. The end. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I think of people like Chain, Steam. I think of people like Don. I think of people um, like Cast. OGs, people of yeah. the eighties, you know what I mean? Well, coma, like coma. Then yeah. you go the other side of the coin. You can go DVA, DVA, yes, Steph, mm-hmm. Glory, mm-hmm. Hitch, mm-hmm. Glory, hold tight. And then you got the four bad vandals, Chalky Side. I can't remember the other case. Thirty two, mm-hmm. I think it was. That's right. There was another one as well. I can't remember, but. That's all back back in the day. Oh, and, too, and again, you too many fried eggs and too many Stella since then. So yeah, and too many late nights and too many early mornings. And if you want to go and check them out, rockincity.com, I can't advocate that enough. But yeah, obviously, I remember seeing all them names on the backs of buses coming home from school. And I thought, yeah, do you remember? I always remember Chalky's house, which was quite funky back then. And Glory's tag was just unique and it's nice, nice G-Fraps. No, I, I actually spotted an old hitch tag not too long ago. Did, now. Where? Hounslow. Oh, you know what, Hounslow is, it's got many jewels around there. Like, not enough people There's play around there. There's a little passageway by the side of Nando's in Hounslow. If you walk down the side of Nando's, it's there on the right hand side. Stop it. Straight up, there's still a hitch tag down there. That's just, that's It's a... still there. I think it must have been like a hammer right in black. Really? Yeah. That's a dream, isn't it? Yeah. When you. Then you remember pieces that TVA done, like a cube uh, bridge along the track side there. Mm-hmm. And I did a TikTok piece behind some house in Wellington Road South in Hounslow. That was nice. Mm. So, yeah. Hounslow, uh, if for those that are not in London, it's a, it's a very, very, very westerly uh, area. That's suburb of London. Yeah, it's a suburb of London. It's which is in an imaginary me. place called Middlesex. Yes. Because you can't buy an A to Z of Middlesex, but you can of Surrey. Can you? It's true. No oh, weird. Yeah. Um, Hounslow for me is it, it, it's rich with I don't know. It's for me. It just feels so far away from where we are sitting <laughs> right now. Um, and big up all the Hounslow crew because uh, obviously then you got Feltham. Yeah. And and also yeah, you got forties out that way. You've yeah. Got, uh, the right is getting over to forties. Yeah, yeah, big up right. to the right as you get over there. That's right. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And then as you go into the Feltham regions and they kind of go southwesterly into Richmond, mm. you have got Unigate Hall of Fame. Yeah. Nice. But people have been there. I'd that's why I've done my little documentary for yeah. those many years ago. People yeah. have seen that. It was six years ago, that. But um, that these were your stomping grounds at, yeah. in Kingston and Ways, and Yeah, it? yeah. A lot of writers come from around there. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, I think Dice is on now. Yeah, that's right. Gasp is that way. Yeah, Mace. And Mace was Mace out. Mace yeah, I think yeah. Dom was out. Yeah. He's in... Yeah, is he? Yeah. Um, and you've got Sky High. Sky High. Bad man. Yes, he's got some nice styles. Oh, he's ridiculous. He's... So, yeah. Guy needs so, a book. He needs yeah. a book. So, yeah. So, there's some nice. I think even Pank lived in a little while. Yeah? Yeah. Well, the funny thing about Don and my mum, they live about four minutes away from each other, four or five minute walk from each other. Really? Yeah, yeah. And big up sister, she lives in. See, South West, uh, has it served you right? What, Kingston? Yeah. I think so. I enjoyed Kingston. Yeah, yeah. I lived on the old famous Jasmine Allen estate from the Bill. Mm-hmm. So, ah, yeah, which is the Cambridge. For those estate. you don't know, again, if you're out the UK, uh, the Bill was a very successful HGTV TV program. program. Yes, yeah. yeah. yes. it's all about the police doing what the police do. So, yeah, I think even Dogs was in the, one of the episodes of the Bill. Not Big up Dogs. Yeah. Um, How yeah. did you get into CBM? A uh, bloke called Mister Met put me in. Really? Well, yeah. For association of the newspaper story. Oh uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. Obviously, I met up with Matt a couple of times, and I think he enjoyed my company, mm. me as a person. Mm. Obviously, I said about the problem I had with Perth. Obviously, mm. Perth saying, well, keep practicing, keep practicing. Mm. And obviously, I was, I was practicing to the point I was getting frustrated with myself, mm. and I thought, you know what? I can't do this. Mm. And I said to Perth, look, mate, as much as I'm practicing, you not in the UK to teach me. Yeah. You can't say, well, you shouldn't put that mark here, you should put it there, and you should do your 3D like this. And Because he wasn't there to guide me, mm. I was getting frustrated with myself. Mm. So I it's, it's, it's easy getting critiqued. It's different when you're yeah. not actually being shown any different. Yeah, yeah. yeah I get obviously, you. if you're on the other side of the world, mm. you can't teach me. No. And like, I think Matt could understand, understand my frustrations. Mm. And him and, and Crep, big up Mr. Crep. Yeah, hold tight, Crep. All and... Day. Uh, they sort of taught me, mm. they showed me mm. 
an easy start, or I'll rephrase it, it's not an easy start. Mm. It looks easy. It may look like bubble letters, but they're not bubble letters. Mm. As a style, it looks easy, but it's really hard. To, so true. So hard to accomplish. So true. So That's that graph stand- as a whole, man. Like, yeah. It's- but what's the, what's the secret of a good tag as someone that's... What's the secret of a good tag? Yeah. It's got to be the hand style that's and the practice and the practice and the keep practising. Mm. And I've practised my tag daily. And it's not obvious an equal tag. It's constant. Constant refining. Yeah. Even I can cross my own tag out thinking I don't like that. Really? Yeah. But well, from a aesthetic, like if you, t- if you were to... Right, the transferal of the tag from paper. Because this is great educationally for anyone that's kind of, you know, we're all constantly learning. And, and there'd be some people out there, some younger people out there that are more intrigued to, to know. These small, fine details, like the application of from paper to, to paint to wall, whatever medium, um, that's, that's full of hurdles as well. Yeah. The, you know, and again, just going back to idea and a handful of the other people that have been on the show that are, ace me, Jesus, the big up ace me. The whole idea of having a flow with letters that are naturally, they, they bounce, they have movement, yeah. they have, the, the, you equal has that because of the E, the Q, which is again circular, the U, which is half a circle, the A, which goes the other way. It's I know, really there's not that many people who use the letter Q either. I no. I quest is done, there's yeah. one myself. Yeah. Is there any others? I know there's an equal up north, but I've never met. No, I don't know of any other than too many, no. No. Which is quite bizarre, actually. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you've got United States of America, you've got Quick. Yeah. But London-wise, not that many. Well, before I wrote equal, I was writing hoax. Hoax? Yeah. H-O-X? Yeah, H-O-A-X. A-O-X. But my exes were looking like somebody else who... Had an ex in their tag from North London. You've uh, had him on here before. Yeah. So big up Mr. Drax. So yeah, my exes and his exes were looking similar. I thought, well, I don't want people, obviously, a legend like Drax. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to find something else. And then equal come up. And I thought, that's a cue. Equal. I don't do murals. I don't do pieces. Equal rights. Mm. So hard. Equal rights. So come on, hence, son. Hanks. Equal. Um, how? This is fucking fantastic. How? Uh, but how, who gave you that name? Me. You just. I picked it up. Went for a dictionary. And I thought equal, equal rights. Yeah. Well, like I say, it, it just works because I don't do murals. I don't do pieces. I and I'm a writer, so I fucking love it. That flicks my switch. Love it. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. It's simple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, how did anybody else get their names? Mm. And obviously the names which aren't like in a dictionary, you think, how the hell did you come up with that? Well, yeah, and that's the thing, because a lot of times it's either passed on respectively from, a, a, you know, a, 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 a head of crew. Um, I know Met has done that a couple of times, hasn't yeah. he, with, with writers. Um, CBM as a, as a crew, for me, is one of such um, diversity. Yeah. Uh, like when you see Fabe and yep. Ram... Yeah, do their thing. It's like, yo, this that is, it's so early London. Yeah, but all, but still has a CBM flavour. Yeah, yeah. And then you obviously you got Met and Crep, which kind of mirror each other. But then you have got Bees as on some like that New York. Yeah, kind of f- flex. And then you look at the early early New York stuff mm. in that Bible Subway up. Yeah, and then you look at King Trev stuff. Mm. And you think, yeah, I can see the. Yeah, yeah, totally. So big up course, to Trev, yeah, yeah, of course. Big up Trev. Yep. Yeah. And then yourself, of course. And then George as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, Wise. Wise. Jesus. I mean, what a fucking it's a mad crew. crew. I probably couldn't even name more. It's probably one of the biggest crews going. Come on, we've got to name the rest of us. We're going to be really <laughs> done in, aren't we? The people are well, gonna... whoever you are, and you're in CBM. Enough of us. Yeah. Friend of a friend of ours. Yeah. Uh, no, it's fantastic. I mean, Fabe's my boy, like... Yeah. We, we go out a lot and just uh, we have a blast. Um, there's a there is a um, camaraderie within CBM which is extremely endearing. Like upgrade another one. Yes, there you go. Yeah, boom, pure. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. They're hope, all coming out hope, now. Hope, hope. hope. Yeah, here we go. We're still coming out now. Yeah. Um, 
I, I couldn't see you in another crew, to be honest. I, I, it's really fitting. Well, I was in Freaks at Large. Perfect in Freaks at Large. Mm. Uh, how long ago was this? <laughs> well, when I was up in Scotland. Really? So that would have been... Well, my mum died eight years ago, December. So, yeah, so... So eight, nine years ago, it might be slightly less than that. So, what, did you live in Glasgow for a bit? No, I lived further north than that, mate. Where? I lived in a place called Fort William up in the Highlands. Jeez, wh- why? Um, <laughs> That's if it's like a shock that um, who would live there. Um, I didn't mean it like that. Well, I mean, how originally come? I moved up to Malik, which is a little village looking over the Isle of Rum and the Isle of Egg and very picturesque. Yeah. And I went up there as a drive, coach driver on a mountain railway tour. Really? So this was September 2010, so 12 year ago. Were you painting up there? No. So <laughs> no, I went up as a coach driver. It's funny that he's got a coach yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I've got a full-size coach. I did a five-day tour up there. Uh, me and the other driver got off, walked around the little village. We had dinner in the West Island Hotel. Very nice hotel. We jumped that part of the way. Mm. And a little secret, they laid trains up at the station overnight. <gasps> Just a thought, if you fancy a holiday up in Ireland. Just a holiday, just a nice yeah. holiday. There's one road in, one road out, though, and the nearest Nick's 48 miles away. Wow. There was one in Malaga, but they closed it down. Really? Yeah. So, but it's after I moved back to Sounds London. Sounds very de- desirable. Uh, right. So, the last place I visited in Malik that day was the spa shop. So, got a packet of folks, drink, got on a steam train out of there, finished the tour, 147 quid's worth of tip off the old deers, lovely. Following in February, so 2011, I'm in a boozer in Kingston just with a mate of mine, wasn't a writer, mm. and he said, you've been single over a year now, Jay, why don't you try internet dating? Just get yourself a few beers and mugshot and what you like, what you don't like, what your kids are like, what you do, and leave it. Then I'll get a beep about a month later from some bird up in the islands, hi, my name's Rosie, blah, 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 where are you? Well, I'm in Kingston, I've... Let me get talking. Got kids? Yeah, I've got four. How many you got? She, I've got four. And her four and my four were the same ages. So when she told me where she was, I said, I think I've been there. I've got a steam train. I'm sure I did last year. She goes, oh. yeah, we got a steam train. So I said, we got off the, off the train there and walked around the boat yard. Oh, my brother-in-law runs her. Oh. And me and the other driver went in the West Highland Hotel. I had to turn to eat. I used to work in there. And the next bit freaked me out. I said, the last place I visited there, I got a packet of fags and a drink out of the spa shop. She goes, I live in the flat above it. <gasps> and we got together. We had a five-year relationship. No way. Yeah. So I, that's why you were up there? I moved up there because of her, obviously, because of mm. all that weird fatey sort of stuff. If, you, belie- if you believe in all that. Yeah. And uh, obviously she moved down here for a little while, gave her flat up, but she couldn't settle. It was too fast for her. Mm. The pace of life for her was too quick. And we moved back up to her mum's for a little while and we ended up in Fort William. Uh, so what a place. It's the only place I know where they had no shoe shops. They closed the last shoe shop while I was there. Yeah? Yeah. The last shoe shop to close was Clark's. Is so... It was quite remote. Very rural as fuck, dude. Yeah, mountains. You're going to get your Air Jordans around there, yeah, but, right. but um, I got Nick for a graph there. Did you? Yeah. PC Scotty and something. Dude, I was like the only guy in the village. Of course you were going to get gripped. Yeah. <laughs> the like, only writer in the, the village. graph guy? Like, He's wearing graph over there. Go get him. The yeah, only graph in the village. It's like a little Britain sketch, isn't it? Yeah. So um, I said to her, I said, I'm obviously getting help from the alcohol and the Councillor said, get into a hobby, and I got back into my graph. So, yeah, I got back into about 2011, back into the graphs. Obviously, I gave up for having kids and whatever. So, I got back into it. And this was, was just to kind of calm your alcohol dependence? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. the councillor said, get into a hobby, and I'm thinking, all right. Well, I used to do graph, and I said, start sketching up, start sketching up. And... There's only so many bits of paper you can do mm. before you think, I need a pen, yeah. a proper pen. I need paint. And yeah. there weren't no chrome and blacks, big up chrome and black, mm-hmm. and all the other paint supplies out there. 
And I said to her, I'm going out to paint. I said, I found a spot. I've seen the locals up there. And they said, Jay, you'll be a good deterrent because we're fed up with the junkies discarding their needles there. The kids can't kick their footballs around or do whatever the kids do nowadays. Mainly Xboxes, but they can't plug them into the grass. So I thought, all right. And this building was due for demolition. The council had run out of funds for this new housing project and this whole disabled centre was all boarded up, ready to be knocked down. Mm -hmm. So the site was perfect. So on my way up to this site, there's one shop, the spell. And I thought, fuck, fuck you. He said, you ain't coming, you want to watch your soaps and don't kind appeal of to me. So I've got four Stellas. Now, in Scotland, there's a bylaw, you can't drink in a public place. So I crack my beer open and there's a group of about 14, 15 up there. So I'm being very discreet with my bag, very discreet with my beer. Mm. They disappear after about 20 minutes, half hour. And I thought, right, I ain't painted in years. So I got my can out. For up an outline, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. It was crap paint. Wall was okay, but mm. it's my first outline for about 10, 15 years. So, your beer's on the floor, like, probably got about 800 quid's worth of paint in it. Mm-hmm. So, I was just buying paint, 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 paint. Mm-hmm. So, I thought, mm, it's getting on a bit half nine. Next thing I know, I had a car pull up. I thought, ah, oh, sir, she's come up in a taxi. Hmm. No. It's a panda car. For you? Police car. Well, obviously, the police police stations are at the bottom of the mountain. (laughs) But they think you're doing wrong because you obviously... Right, so he's come out the driver's side, dumb WPC. Okay, she was cute, very cute. Yeah. Not that I'm into police women's uniforms and stuff like that. It sounds like an only falls on all sorts. (laughs) (laughs) Big up only falls on all sorts. Every day, every Uh, day. uh, So, what are you doing? You glue sniffing. Okay. Well, okay. I can explain my way through this one. No, I'm not. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you vandalism. Vandalism. How old are you? Oh, it's about 42. Mm. 40 old, 42, 40 old, year old bloody graffiti. I said, you got nothing better to do. I said, no, not really. No, not really, yeah. Um, well, because obviously you haven't got permission, we've got to take you to Fort William, Nick. Okay. So he takes me back, leaves the beer there. Bit of luck. So, obviously, he's missed that. He's accused me of glue sniffing and puts me in the back of the police car behind this WPC. Now, I'm cuffed. All right, cool. So, he sets off and I said, Dan, I hate to mention this, but your WPC you got to say in front of me, she's quite cute. Stop it, you right. didn't say that, did you? Sorry, I'm Go on. Right. No, I'm just being nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. being polite. I said, if you've got our anchor up, mate, I've got no foot pedal because I've got no seatbelt on. Hmm. Oh, for fuck's sake. Thought you'd your old graffiti artist and he wants a bloody seatbelt on. Well, hmm. It's the law, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so they put me in the cells for a little while, a couple of hours later, and they phoned the missus up. Oh, for fuck's sake, she's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something Nick. And... Uh, a couple of hours later, she said, um, we've got to take a statement. Hey, yeah, okay. So we were in this interview room, mm. tapes going, right, at such a time tonight, we caught you at the anger centre graffiti or defacing with graffiti. We did notice you were using the word equal. Why was this? Well, I write equal because equal rights writing it down. I said, not only that, back in the 80s, I used to watch Edward Woodward in The Equaliser, writing it down. I said, did you know he was married to Michelle Daltrice? What? What are you on about? I said, Michelle Daltrice. Yeah, she was Betty in some mother's album. She was married to Frank Spencer. Oh, right. Okay. So he's written this down. He said, right, you need to sign this, right? He said, you can have your beers back, but you can't have your paint back. Okay, right. So, more of the story of this is, as I'm walking up the road with my beer, a police car goes shooting past me. Well, I don't know if that was sent out to see if I'd cracked open a beer or not. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know and I don't really care. Mm-hmm. But once it passed, I'd cracked it open anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm waiting for a letter to go to 
their magistrate court up there or their sheriff's court, whatever they call them up north, nothing came through. Now, a mate of mine in Croydon, he, he works at a coach company, he had stuff coming up for the Olympics in 2012. He had mm-hmm. a Belgian sponsor. He said, Jay, you still up in Scotland working? I said, no, I ain't working. He said, could you do me a favour? Ask your mum if she can put up with you. I said, bloody hell, mate, she's put up with me for 40 odd years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So he said, just ask her. But we'll sort you out some wheels. We'll pay for your travel down. And obviously, you work the Olympics for us. So I phoned mum. Mum said, yeah, fine. And they sorted that out. So the moral of the story is, I made an A5 cart for this police officer. Because it ain't been to court. So basically, they're holding my property, my paint. Because that, because that hasn't been to court. Yeah. Because it's no, not, ev- not being used as evidence. Yeah. So... I made him a card saying, due to employment purposes down in London, with designated graffiti spots, either tolerated or legal, mm. I could paint on my days off. So I went down to Nick on the Friday night, so I was due out on the Saturday. See the receptionist, I see, see PC Scott, who's just being briefed for his evening's work, all right, just waiting in the waiting room to be out. So he came in, I said, I've got something for you. I handed him his card. I said, oh, I like that, that's really nice. I said, now read the inside of it. Mm. Oh, wow, you've got you've managed to get employment. I said, yeah. I said, I want my paint back because I, I can paint legal spots in, in London and surrounding areas. He said, I've got to run it past the sergeant, Jay. But I'll see what he says. So a couple of minutes later, the sergeant's come in and uh, he said, I could take that as a bribe. I said, you what? I said, it's a nice gesture for me to Scott asking if I can have my paint back because obviously it hasn't been to court and I can use it in designated spots in London. He said, um, <clears throat> I'll make a deal with you. Well, go on then. So, this equal name, he said, you can have your paint back on one reason and one reason only. He said, if I find... One, just one equal tag anywhere in the Highlands of Scotland, I'm going to hunt you down and you'll do time for it. Wow. So I got my paint back and after the Olympics, I started writing sequel two. And also I used quail for a little while just to swap mm. it about mm. a bit. But yeah, for a little while I was known as sequel two up in Scotland. That's an amazing story. It's, uh, it takes a lot, of, it takes a lot of balls to uh, walk back into a place and say, "I'll have a paint back now." Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 I can't imagine a scenario where a graph writer could actually go and do that. Well, if it had been, if it had gone to court, yeah, it'd be different. It'd be different because they could use that paint as evidence. They do that with um, technology as well. If you've got your laptop yeah. and things like yeah. that, yeah. But because it hadn't gone to court, I thought. Okay, you've, you confiscated yeah. it. That's it. You confiscated it. But because it ain't been a court, you're now holding my my property. Property, yeah. So I thought in for a penny and in for a pound. What would the worst that would have happened if they had, if if you had approached them with the same temperature of quiz? But that, but they what what could have happened? What could the worst could have happened? I don't know. I'm I didn't. Curious, I, I don't even think I would have even thought about the consequences. Comment below if you uh, if this has ever you know, been experience. I, yours. I thought well, that's mine. I want it back. Yeah. I can use it yeah. in a designated or illegal spot. Which is bona fide. Or if I could get away with doing something illegal, yeah, it's still my my paint. Yeah, it's and the I, act. I actually paid for it. It's know, the act. That it's, or it's the act that's illegal, not yeah. the not the product yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. I mean, this opens a little bit more of a conversation about you know graffiti stores and me and coffee's and, cold. <laughs> and his coffee's cold. Um, uh, why did you? Why did you graffiti? What? What's the? What did, got me into it? Caught blind me. I thought this was coming up. Right. I don't know if anyone's seen my previous interview from six years ago. When I was about ten, eleven, twelve, mum started wanted to start going to church. Uh, 
it was not the best move she ever made. Obviously, I was obviously coming up to school going to secondary school sort of time um, and she found my secondary school which was a Catholic all boys school and we started going to the Catholic church in Serbian where mum was making new friends, family friends and one guy there which used to help out with the priest and all the altar servers and that general games on behind the scenes. He wasn't really a gentleman. He was a paedophile, unbeknown to me mum and dad. Um, so, yeah, it's quite hard. I've mentioned it in the previous interview, but, yeah, I was sexually assaulted by this guy over a course of about two years. Um, I couldn't tell mum and dad. He often came round to the family home like, on a Sunday afternoon for Sunday lunch and stuff like that, and mum and dad didn't even realise. Mum and dad, obviously, coming up Christmas time, so want to go and get me and my sister Christmas presents. Occasionally she would be with a friend or she'd, mum and dad would drop me at his house thinking, oh, we was just watching videos and DVDs, but be videos back then. Mm. And unbeknown to them, while at his premises, me and my sister, well, not at the same time, were both being sexually assaulted by this guy. So you did, did so just one second. So you're... You didn't know your sister was being sorted. Nope. She didn't know that nope. you were being sorted. Nope. I didn't find out my sister was being assaulted till when was it? I want to say two thousand and one. She wow. actually took him to court. Took he him went to, court. to Kingston Crown Court, and I had to stand up on a dock and give evidence, saying, "Well, we don't just didn't happen to my sister, but this happened to me." And you probably weren't the only ones, neither. No, um, obviously. I found out later when, obviously, when the police took my statement that when I described the house or his house, mm. they got back to me and said, believe it or not, it's still the same. The way you described it is bang on. Wow. To the extent he still had the same bed frame, you know, the same furniture. It's nuts. Fucking creep. Yeah. Yeah. Weirdo. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was hard. Obviously, do I blame him? Probably not. That's, that's very brave of you to say. Explain the, th the theory on that. What, 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 if it, that's the way he is built. Obviously, you got your childhood. And as you grow up through your teenage and puberty... You know basically what sexuality you are. Mm. You may be gay, you may be straight, you might be bi, whatever. But I think if you're into kids, you already know you're into kids. I just can't get over that hump in my mind of what you're saying, which is um, it's the way that they're built. It's true, it's the way that they're built. But, but how do they... How do they legitimise it? How did they? How do they process we, and legitimise it? Know. We will never know how a paedophile gets that way, or what makes them tick mm. to do that. Mm. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. No. The average person probably wouldn't know. But something inside them says, "I'm going to do that." And you've had the experience of this. I'm pretty thousand percent sure here that you've gone through every logical conclusion you've you know you've probably written it down you've probably talked to countless people there's probably been enough I've times i blame my mum for it i blame my dad for it but i'll apologize for blaming them because they didn't know they will never know why they left us with him he he gained their trust yeah it's not their fault no but i know what you're saying it, but there's you, a blame to, as a parent but, but it, yeah 
for many years I did blame my mum and dad because it was their idea to leave us with him. But me and my sister couldn't tell mum and dad what was going on because I think both of us, me and my sister, would probably think they don't believe us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it lasted for as long as it did. How long did it last for that? that probably period? two, three years for me. I think it might have been. And was it frequent? Was it really regular? It was probably a couple of times a month because most of it, most Sundays we were yeah. at, at the same church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, Mum got me. Believe it or not, I was an altar server. I was on the priest doing all that fucking incense shit and lighting yeah. candles, and yeah. and he would come in and help out, and there'd be a peck on the head, and weird. That's weird. Yeah, you think, but. Because you're so little yeah. and naive, you just think, oh. It's normal. Yeah. I knew it was normalised. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, he wasn't English. He was from Peru, believe it or not. Really? So we just thought that was one of his customs. Yeah. Well, I probably thought that was yeah. one of his customs, how they meet and greet. It's like when you go to France. Yeah, yeah, Trump, yeah. You know. But um, you just go with it. But obviously, for the horrible side of shit, it was horrible. And I think, obviously, how I got through school, I don't know. I think that's probably why I got into graph, because it was an outlet. It got all that mm. shit out of my head. It was pushed to the back of my head. Mm. And I just focused on graph, graph, and graph. Mm. And, you know, and... Um, Obviously, like I say, I didn't know he, he was molesting and assaulting his sister either. And just, other people, by the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah. Well. So, yeah, he, he'd done a year. He got a year for that. Not enough. No. Not even touching the surface. If I was to bring back hanging, I think I would have sent him for hanging. With all paedophiles. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> 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 he sent it to me. Yo. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, like I say, that's how I got into the graph is... Obviously, because of that abuse, and I just focused on that graphing, 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 trying different names. Started off as Joker at about eighty three with J A J O K A. Um, then I went to the hoax because of obviously the link between Joker mm -hmm. and the hoaxes, mm -hmm. and then obviously I become equal. Um, but yeah, do I, I think say that was an equal measure? Oh, hey. I like the puns. Yes, it. So, like I say, yeah, I needed an outlook. I needed something mm. to take that away from me. So, yeah. Well, that's it's kind of a silver lining. That sounds I think that's sound what's like... probably scoped me for who I am today, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because and... would I have got into graphic if it hadn't have happened? I don't know. And that asks a, a more worldly question of, you know, are there any mistakes? Are there any, you know, because when people own their own pain, own their own trauma, it, it allows them to, um, even if it is the drink binging, hmm. do you know what I mean? It's a course of, it's a course and a path in which you're always just owning your shit. Yeah. It can only be the drinking is also an escapism. But you from, did own it, and you've said, yeah. "I'm going to get help." Yeah. Would you have got help had you not have had the experiences you had up until now? It's the bigger question, you know. Oh, because I think a lot of people said I needed counselling for what happened back then. Hmm. Personally, we don't want to talk about it to a counsellor. Hmm. Probably not. Yeah, that's true. Because it's so buried. Hmm. At the back of my head, I don't even think about it. Is it liberating to talk about it, or do you feel like some of it's still buried? Um, most of it's buried. Mm. Obviously, I don't really want to go into no. horrible details no, and need that neither, stuff no. like that. Yeah. So obviously, people don't want to hear what happened. Obviously, they, they know equals sexually assaulted. Yeah, yeah. So they can imagine what's happened. Yeah. So, am I proud that it's happened? No, I'm not. Am I proud that I'm a writer now? Yes, I am. You should be fucking proud that you can talk about it and that you're fucking... The writing, the, the contribution that you've made because of, you know, like I say, out of, out of uh, uh, how lemons come lemonade, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, if I 
didn't have that, would I be a writer? Or yeah. I could have gone down the other path. I might have been a golfer. I might mm. have been knocking a little white ball in away in holes. What's mm. the big red veil? Graph. Could be, could be, could be <laughs> anything, man. You yeah. could be still be lighting incense in a church for all we know. Yeah, sod that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, not, to, not yeah. that we uh, have a problem with uh, yeah. the, the religious views, uh, you know. Yeah. Amen. Amen, that's one. Um, he was a writer, you know. Eh? No, not A. Amen. He was a writer. Oh, right, I was going to say, I was going <laughs> to... Oh, hang on a minute. Um, uh, I think what you've just presented there and what I've seen of you documenting this, you should be fucking proud of yourself, brother. And Thank you. It's a testament to your character and a huge... Adv- it's an advantage for us that you're able to do what you do on surfaces, walls and buses and do you to the fullest uh, because that's just... That's celebrated in this podcast and the fact yeah. that you're here to talk about it. Yeah. It's fucking great. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I am I ashamed of it? Yes, I am ashamed that it's happened to me. I'm ashamed it's happened to my sister. But if I'd known what I know now, like I say, would I, would I be a writer now? Exactly. Who knows? Life is a funny way, isn't it? Yeah. And, you, and look who you meet along that journey of being a writer. Believe that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like I say, it all extends down to going to get your papers in the morning and clean over that little ginger head. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yo, know, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on, brother. It's no been problem. a real fucking pleasure. Yeah. Equal inside the house. CBM crew hold tight. Sweet, man. It's been fucking great. You like that? I love it. <laughs> they all love it. Yo, you know what it is. Killer Keller podcast. Our in was out of fashion. Sharon is caring. All right, go get them. Oh, yes. And now, of course, big up for the peace. Equal inside the house. And he will remain in the house. There you go. Oh, uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. You know what it is. All right, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Big up, equal. Big up, CBM. Peace.